I'm hoping that this is a partial skeleton here. I still have no idea actually what this bone is. Probably, most likely is Triceratops horn. It's important to go out and collect these so that that history isn't lost. I'm out here in the Hell Creek Formation in South Dakota, and it's been a fantastic day. We found a Triceratops horn. We found a complete turtle shell. Uh, the Triceratops horn had some other bones associated with it, and we found about five or six other bones that were going into the hillside. And that's pretty unusual. Um, a lot of the times when we're out here, this trip alone, we've covered over 100 miles. And some of those days we walked for six or seven hours without even finding a scrap of bone. One thing that I wanted to bring up is that fossils are very fragile and they're exposed by the weathering of the rains and the winter snows. And some fossils can be exposed and then destroyed in the same season. So in order to gather that information so it's not lost forever, it's important to go out and collect these so that that history isn't lost. So we walked in from over here by this lake and came up to this mudstone. And this I actually just came across. So this is kind of a exploded portion of bone here. And then it's going into the ground there. But that's actually not the first thing we found from this. Up here, a little ways away, you have two more bones. One right here, a little bit fragmented and then one going in right here. So this is mudstone. A lot of the times with this kind of depositional environment, you can have an animal that died and instead of it being washed down a river and kind of destroyed and, you know, distributed, uh, they'll kind of sit in one spot and maybe only get spread out over 20 or 30 feet. Um, so I'm hoping that this is a partial skeleton here. And we'll see, we'll see what it's looking like. The first thing that I do when I find a spot like these is uh, gather up all of the loose pieces because these can be reattached to the fossil later. It takes a long time and it's very tedious work, but I don't want to leave any behind. And if I'm gonna dig to expose this portion that's going down into the ground, I wanna make sure that all the loose pieces are out of the way so I don't bury it first. So I'm just gonna make a little pile over here. First thing I'm doing is all these pieces have kind of cracked apart and fragmented. So I'm applying a special glue that's easy to reverse once I have it back to the lab and that will just kind of hold this in place for now while I'm working and I didn't bring a ton of glue today because we're just prospecting so I'm going to try to use it sparingly now let's see if this continues into the ground looks like it does a little bit at least might be a little it's so close to the surface that it's probably, even though it's all in place, it's probably fragmented in the ground. I gotta be really careful of that while I'm excavating with this piece. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it already wants to crack up. Glue that piece up because it's a little bit loose. And I think as I get a little deeper, it should be a little more structurally sound. The nice thing too about this spot is it's so close to the surface that there's really not a lot of overburden digging to be done. It's just kind of prying this weathered mudstone layer off the top. The other nice thing about the mudstone is the clay will kind of separate from the bone. So if you come in at an angle like this, that piece will just kind of pop right off separate from the bone. Widen the, the trench around a little bit. It's starting to go down in. And I still have no idea actually what this bone is yet. I think once we get a little bit deeper, we'll, we'll have a much better idea.
kind of the shape right there going down in. Still going. So uh, at this point it might be a little bit long, getting a little bit long for a horn unless it's a big adult. Also horns have a very specific texture bone on the surface and it's hard to tell on this because most of the surface there is gone and most of the surface down here is still covered in a little layer of ironstone. Switch over to a larger digging knife. Just gonna slightly pry these pieces up a little more efficiently. So it kind of gives the impression that it's narrowing a bit here, but I can't tell if it's just because I need to go further down in. But if it is narrowing like that, it's most likely horn. It'd be really cool because that means the skull is probably in this area. Soaking the glue into the cracks there. If you've ever seen like the inside of a, or like the horn core of a cow or a bison. It almost looks like a little river system of little kind of valleys going through it. And that's so that the, uh, the bone can send nutrients via the blood to create the keratin horn. And that's the same thing with Triceratops. They have that same kind of pattern. It looks very similar. <sighs> Because it's diving in at a pretty deep angle, um, I'm gonna widen this area quite a bit so that there's good room to work. And I'll probably bury the fossil a little bit in doing so, but it would be easy to cover again. Just to be safe, I mean, for an adult trike, the longest bone would maybe be like that, for a really big one. So I think if I widen it to about there, it should be, should be good. I definitely don't think this is this is hazard sore. The bone texture is just not right. it being this close to the surface the rain and elements have softened this matrix to the point where it's incredibly easy to dig seems kind of like it's tapering but it also could be part of the bone that's turned a little bit and so it's the thin edge Keep checking these pieces just to make sure I'm not, you know, that it's all just concretion and that I'm not chipping away the bone. Definitely seems like it's tapering. So at this point, I'm thinking it probably, most likely is Triceratops horn based on that curve and it seems in, seeming to taper down, but I'm still not 100% sure. And that is the end of it, it looks like. So yeah, that is almost certainly a Triceratops horn. See the kind of curves this way and they generally have that little bit of curve to them and that's the tip right there that's incredible
pretty cool to just have that whole front part of the horn just totally intact. A lot of times if you find them, they'll be at least busted up at some point. But luckily this one, just the base, was kind of broken up and the rest is intact. And the interesting thing is, I think judging by how much bone is down here at the base, it's likely that there might be other parts of the skull in here as well. Look at that. That is so cool. Amazing. This is kind of what was like what was visible on the surface. But man, I was not expecting it to just taper into this perfect horn down here. And this is just this is an unbelievable fossil. And you know, to find it just in this condition is super exciting. And especially the fact that there are more bones further that way. Now we are at the spot that I actually first found where there's a bone right here coming out and a bone right here. This piece over here looks relatively stable. And so I'm gonna start by working on this one and we'll get to that one later. All right, so we're following this one in. It could be maybe the other horn tapering to this end, perhaps. We'll see. It's getting a little wide down here, but um, that could just be the base. Yeah, it's definitely really widening out here. Um, unless that's a unless it's a huge animal. Kind of not thinking it's a horn, we'll see. It does have the right curvature though. I just chipped a little piece off there that I gotta glue back in. And the concretion is flaking off right, right along there. as it gets back up to the surface here. Some kind of weird looking concretion in here that looks like bone kind of on first glance, but it isn't. And collect some of these pieces. Now this, the tip of whatever this bone is, is super fragmented, so this would be a challenge to get all these little pieces reattached, but I'm going to try to save as many as I can anyways, just in case. But that's like a thousand piece puzzle with each piece being about a centimeter and all kind of the same shape and size. That would be quite the task, but hopefully the few of the little larger ones I'll be able to get back on and uh, go from there. Definitely has the right shape for a horn, but uh, for the other brow horn, that is. But what's confusing me is that this side, if you look at this edge, it seems very flat and not curved. So that confuses me a little bit as far as it being a horn. Try to look at this edge that seems kind of flattish. See if I can figure out what's going on there. It also could be that the horn got a little bit smushed in the in the mudstone. So that's essentially I think the outline of this bone. And I'm still unsure what that is. taper and the curve looks a little weird and then on this side it's very flat 
along that edge. So I'm kind of confused. For this bone, it's a little more fragmented on the surface. And it also looks like it has some kind of thin edges. So it, it probably needs a lot of glue. So I'm actually not going to excavate this too much until I can come back with a little bit of glue to stabilize it before I do that. Just gonna collect a few little pieces and kind of see what this is looking like. So that's the bone right there and it actually kind of has a little bowl in there. 